great night of British boxing. So Joshua Boatze beat Dan Aziz on points in their WBA light heavyweight eliminator at Wembley Arena on Saturday night. Again, Azim slips on the wet surface of the ring, but that was a great punch from Boatsy, and that's a second knockdown in the round. Boatsy putting left hook, right hook, left or right hook. Good he's, work from Joshua Boatsy here. He's, he's, he's trying to take him out here. He's trying to take him out. He's in desperate trouble. And if he keeps, I don't think Aziz really knows where he is. Declaring your winner, and now the winner of the WBA final eliminator, and now the mandatory for the WBA World Championship and the new British and Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Champion, Joshua Boo-Hatsi! Yep, two judges scored at 116-110 and the other 117-109 to the man who's sitting in studio with Simon and myself this lunchtime, Josh Boatsi. Good afternoon. How you doing? We're good, uh, Josh. Uh, are you somewhat relieved it's over now? Because Dan Aziz yeah. is your pal. Yeah, man. It's been going on for, I think, since August. So maybe like five months. So it's, it's nice to finally put that to bed. Um, mixed emotions because I'm very happy I came out on top that I won the final eliminator. But um, as I said in the ring, I didn't want to take Dan's belts. I just wanted to win and to campaign for the world. Um, title so mixed emotions and I do wish Dan was here it took two of us to make that fight if I fought someone boring that was running you guys first of all wouldn't have had me in and it would be a boring fight but Dan made it a very interesting fight you were there, Simon. Yeah. You, you, you were sitting with your pal Noel Gallagher. Mm -hmm. um, I was tired looking at him. I just wanted to concentrate <laughs> on you and Dan. Um, what did you make of this man's performance? Um, it was what I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a very, very good British fight. I thought that they, the challenge for Josh and I felt for both Josh and Dan was this, irrespective of the professionalism that's required to go in and win this fight and there were obstacles in one another's way, they're also human beings that have an affection and a feeling for one another. And I felt at certain times, certainly in round 12, that that affection might have blighted Josh's ability to have taken Dan out. And that's not me being disrespectful to Dan. Listen, it was a great fight. It was it, once it got going. It was a great fight. Nobody took a step back. There were levels in that fight. The better work, the quality of work, um, was Josh's all the way through. Um, both of them took some shots. Both of them took more shots than I think they probably would have liked to have to yeah, took. Definitely. But it was a really, really good fight. Yeah. And I knew it was going to be a, a good fight. And and people that weren't paying attention to it uh, initially paid attention to it. You know, the auditorium was full. Sky's build-up was right about it. It was a great fight. It was a really, really good fight. Uh, Simon touched on something there, Josh. Yeah. Because he's your dear friend, and you were on top, and I watched it from start to finish, could you have put my way in the final round? And you chose not to. I, I wouldn't say I chose not to. Um, that one was tough. I, I watched the fight back, but, and but some shots that hit him. put my way? Because he's your mate... <laughs> Did you hang off from doing that? Nah, I don't want to get that narrative out there. Honestly, yeah, if I could have, I would have taken him out just because for those 12 rounds, I knew what we had to do. But he was surviving. He, he, he um, And I was also careful that I didn't want to walk into anything um, given that I thought, you know, I should, I should be ahead was, here. Was so. it what you expected, Josh? I mean, ultimately, in the lead up to the fight, you didn't want everybody knew, and you too, whether you say it or you didn't, everybody knew that you were the favourite. Even the bookies were going four to one on, which is okay. a pretty much saying you're the favourite. You you come through in a certain way. And, and Dam tried to play the narrative to get the mind games going about you're the favourite, so he can build up some sort of head of yeah. steam behind him. But did the fight play out the way you thought it was going to play out? Because at times it turned into a slugfest, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, what was different was that I was saying to my mate that I sparred down so many times and I thought it would be the same, not yeah. as in how sparring was, but it was very strange when we walked into the middle and I thought, oh, blimey, there's no head guard, there's smaller gloves on, there's no one wearing a T-shirt, we're actually about to mix it up in front of everyone. Um, and from when the bell went, I said, it's got to be done tonight. I have to get him. But yeah, there were moments where I thought this is like sparring in terms of the intensity mm -hmm. and getting caught and hitting him back. But 
above everything, I just said I've got to make sure I win. Yeah. Do you feel the pressure? I mean, the expectation on you was slightly different to Dan. Dan has come up a different way. He hasn't fought in the Olympics and done the things that you've done. He hasn't mm. had the big moves from matchroom to boxer with Sky yeah. being at the centre of it because you wanted to fight at Sky. Did you feel additional pressure? Did it, was it a weight on your shoulders saying, I've got, you know, every fight you go into, you've got to win. But this is a domestic fight. It's with a big rival. It's a gateway to the big time where you want to be. Did you feel that pressure going into the fight? I'll tell you the pressure that um, I considered was that if I'd lost this fight, there was nothing in place for me. So that's a lesson that I've learned. That going into this, I didn't cover my tracks in the sense of had, that, had it not have gone my way, there was no, oh, then we're going to do this with you, we're going to do that. So that was where I, why I said, Josh, you have to win. No matter yeah. how you feel, what's going on, make sure you win this fight. But what does I mean, what what giving yourself an option look like in that instance? Because well, you might sit down with your team or those that are a bit in charge and say, yeah. if it doesn't go well for you, but see, you can fight that guy, then we'll yeah. put you back here and shuffle you and this and that. But that conversation wasn't there. So I said, no one's come up to me to have that conversation. So my tracks are not covered. So I have to win. That, mm -hmm. That's that's the pressure that I felt on me that I said, this is on you. You have to win. What did you think? I mean, I, I was critical of your last performances against Stepien and, and people talk about the difficulty of the opponent and I felt that you weren't in your groove and it was a pedestrian fight. Right? And I thought if you fought the way you did against Stepien, you were going to have trouble with Dan. Yeah. Right? What did you make of your performance? Um... I think it's what I said in the ring. The opponent, that's why we have to thank Dan and I wish he was here because yeah. he brought that side out. He didn't do Stephen didn't come to engage so it made it very difficult but Dan came to engage and maybe people saw what they wanted to see. Two guys that wanted to win, that mm -hmm. wanted to engage and, you know, someone had to win. Yeah, so it, it was, I haven't spoken to my coach yet but he wasn't smiling the whole time so right. I'm sure there's bits he was happy with but bits that he says, Josh, we have but a lot of work think? to do. You, you're um, in there. My, myself, I think that um, it was it was okay. I got hit way more than I wanted mm. to. Yeah, but um, and and I got hit and mistakes that I made. I know that I wouldn't get away with at the level that I want to get. Because that was one of my yeah. takeaways, Josh. Yeah. my yeah. takeaway from this was this is a different level. Yeah, to go to Bivol. Yeah, and to go to Better Biev. Yeah, and my thought process was. This is a big jump now. Yeah. This jump from beating Dan Aziz and beating other fighters on the way that you've that you've done, that's given us this perception that you're going to be at the top of the tree. Yeah. It does feel like another huge jump that, now yeah, to yeah. go to Bivol and to Better Beef, which is why I think, I don't know what you think, a fight with Anthony Yard yeah. bridges that gap yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, it's, what do you I, think, it's, more yeah, importantly? You know what, I think initially I wasn't entertaining it because I was like, well, if I've won the final elim eliminator, let me go straight away. Yeah. Um, the reality is that he's fighting um in June. Of, yeah, in June. So he's tied up to the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's if they do a rematch, as obviously yeah. they probably will. Mm -hmm. And then that means the that fight year. wouldn't happen yeah. until the first, the end of yeah. the first quarter of the year. So it's a long time to just hang yeah. about, which yeah. is what I'm not fight. gonna do. Yeah. So I'm definitely entertaining the yard fight. Of course, it has to be on better terms to suit me. I, I'm Huge the one fight. that just came off a final Absolutely. eliminator. So, yes. Yes. yeah, it, the, yeah. The, the risk has to match the rewards. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in for Josh, it. Yeah. Was that canvas as slippery as it looked? Dan I promise you. A couple of times. What, what was I going on? I promise you. It was, I'm, not, I'm not sure what was wrong with it, but I promise you it was very, very slippery. And the thing is, um, even the, the knockdowns from watching it back, I don't think one of them was a knockdown. I'm not too sure which one because they're. They were both a bit. The first one, I think, questionable. Right? Yeah, yeah. The but second one was the first one was counted, though, wasn't it? Mm. The second they were one, both the counted. Second, well, the first one was definitely counted by the referee. The second one, he went to the corner, didn't he? Because it was right at the end of the round. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so yeah. I didn't count it when I've, I I hadn't scored either knockdown because I scored it 116, 112 because I wasn't sure okay, if the referee yeah, counted yeah. either one of them. And then Spencer said he'd counted both. That's why yeah, you got 116, yeah. 110, right? Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, but it it was as slippery as it looked. I promise you. Many people getting in touch. David in Birmingham is a big boxing fan. Afternoon, guys. Uh, Jim Simon, please pass it on. Huge congratulations to Josh Boazzi on his brilliant win. Thought it was a great fight, and he's a breath of fresh air. Uh, and it was a breath of fresh air to see the, the respect that exists between the two of them. And yeah. that was so good to, to see, as yeah, I said no, to you out there. Yeah, brilliant. I'm very glad to, to show that to everyone because, like Simon said, is as much as, yeah, we're professionals, we had to deal with a whole for me anyways i had to yeah. deal with someone i said this is my friend i like this guy yes but when we stood in that ring i said i have to do what i'll do to anyone else and it was mm. unfortunate and i knew that 
he would try to do the same to me. No, so you're right. Absolutely. The minute the belt ended, yeah. it all yeah. the emotion. He's yeah, your it, pal. It, it all went. Like, he's my pal. 